Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Amy, and welcome back to another video. So, I've been on vacation for the last week and a half, and I did not announce it on my video because, um, on, well, I did say in my last video I was going on vacation, but I did not say when or how long. So, I'm pretty sure I didn't, but I did go on vacation. I did tell people on my Discord, but I did not tell you actually on my channel. So, sorry about that. It was very hard for me to actually, um, I edited videos on vacation, but I did not post any because it was very hard for them to load while I was on vacation. So, yes, one video from vacation will be coming out. I didn't have a lot of time to film, so there's that. And this was not very, I stopped, it was kind of like a, not a stop and uh, spend time in one area. It was kind of spend in different areas, but yeah, that's one thing. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I've been on vacation and I'm back now and I'm going to be making a lot of videos and doing a, pretty much all the time I have in between whatever else I'm doing this summer is going to be with animals. Um, everything is going to be animals because I have a lot of things right now going on right now with animals and I have one announcement that I'm going to be making. Um, to you guys in one of my next videos so be on the lookout for that it's super exciting and it's going to be on the website starlightsnowrescue.com too and um maybe somewhere else i'm not sure but very excited to be back and making more videos for this video today is going to be slug care um i announced my vacation video i announced the other secret announcement last thing Enter the giveaway, guys. It's, it doesn't have an end date set, but at 100 subscribers, it's going to end. So I'm going to try and advertise it um, on any animal-related places I can, um, just so I can get, like, a whole spectrum of animal people. Um, but, yeah. So enter that, guys. It is a $10 to $15 Visa gift card. Go to the video that is titled Announcement. I think, or giveaway, I don't know, I, I haven't looked in a while, but go to that video and you will find the giveaway video, that's the giveaway video I'm pretty sure. I will link the giveaway video down below and the instructions and everything you need to do. All you need to do is post a random heart emoji of your choice and a snail emoji in the comments and I will probably pin your comment or take a picture of it so that, um... I can find you at the end of the giveaway. Yes. So if I um if near a hundred subscribers I get like a lot of people coming into the giveaway, I will um make it go longer. I may even make it to go to one twenty five just so we have a full variety of people, not just like five or six. Just a lot. And we have more than like six we have more than five right now, I think. But not a ton of people. I don't really know how many there are, to be honest. I lost count. But, not a whole ton of people, but we're not at 100 yet, so. Um, yeah. And not everyone who has subscribed is entered, so. But, you need to enter, guys. All the instructions will be in the description of this video. Go. You can enter in this video as well. I don't really care. Just enter anywhere um, on my recent videos. But let's get to today's video. So after all those announcements, we are on to slug care. Now, on my Discord, I'm pretty sure I already said this, but you guys wanted slug care. I am not, I don't have enough subscribers to ask you guys in polls or anything. So when I get to that, I will start asking you guys personally on YouTube what you want. But if you do have a video of mine that you want me to do, just put it in the comments. If it deletes your comment, just keep commenting and I don't care, spam me. I don't I don't really care. Just YouTube is dumb, okay? It keeps deleting comments. I don't know why. But if you want me to do something, just recommend it to me and I would do it. But you guys wanted slug hair and when you when you're in the snail um hobby, I guess, uh you don't really think of slugs that much, and um I was thinking before I made this video, I was thinking, I was like, you know, I don't really see a lot of people who have slugs, to be honest. I mean, uh, everybody who has snails, pretty much a good half of them have slugs too, but it's not their main thing. It's the main thing is usually snails. But some people, I do know people who 
do like slugs better and have snails. So they just prefer the slugs. I do know people who do that or who are like that, but that, that's okay because, you know, everyone's different. But we're going to be doing a slug care video. I don't think I've ever seen one before. Now that I think of it, I don't. And they are actually different than the snails. So I don't think I've ever actually seen one of these before or any, like, how to feed them, how to care for them sheets. I don't think, I've seen a few, but not as many as I've seen of snails. So, this may be the first one, I don't know. But, let's just get to it. Um, so first thing is finding slugs. The first thing I'd like to say about that is I have a bunch of baby slugs, guys. Um, I will show you all if I can. They're, oh gosh, um, they're right there. If y'all can see those. Those are the baby slugs. Oh, they're on the lid too. Um, those are my baby slugs, the newest. I have other ones, but once they get to a big size, I'm going to be adopt letting them um, get adopted out. So if you want a slug and you're looking to adopt one, just let me know. They're going to be um, up for adoption pretty soon. I don't do baby adoptions just because you don't know if they're going to live or not. Um, sad to say, but yeah. So let's get to that. Finding slugs. Um... Generally, depends on your area. I think slugs are easier to find in my area, but they may be, that may be a, I don't know, universal thing. Maybe you all think the same thing. It's easier to find slugs. But slugs are usually the thing I see most of in my area, or I hear a lot of people finding slugs more than snails. But um, right after rainstorms, rainstorms, <laughs> um, at right after it rains, that is a perfect time to go out and look for slugs. They love the moist um, area and areas and look under logs, maybe rocks, uh, depends on the size, I guess. Look under like objects in your yard because um, little micro habitats will form under them and lots of um, critters will live under there. And so yeah, just pick up objects. Um, I've known a lot of people have slugs just living on the side of their houses, uh, but yeah, I guess you could look on the side of your house. Um, after you find a slug though, you could get it identified. It's not necessary because, um, I mean, I guess it's just not necessary if you don't really care, you just want a slug, but a lot of people do want them identified. But I would just say, yeah, go ahead and identify them just to figure out what you're dealing with. Um, I don't know of any predatory slugs that eat each other yet, but I know of snails, but you know. Once you find them, you do your research um, on what species they are. You're good with finding them. Now let's get to how to house them. So, one of the most common things I see with snails and slugs is little Tupperware containers. That is like perfectly okay. I do have Tupperware containers too. Those are perfect. Um, they don't look pretty, but they work. So that's kind of the things with snails and slugs. It doesn't always look pretty, but it works. So you kind of have to see what's best for the animal and not what looks good. Um, another common thing I see are these little critter keepers. Um, this has a beetle in it right now, but that's just one I had for snails. Um, I have a bunch of these. I don't particularly like these because um, of all the ventilation. Um, now, big glass terrariums. Um, they do, if you buy the screen lids, they do have a lot of ventilation too, but I usually tape them all up or put plastic wrap over them so you can get rid of all that. But they, these always have a lot of ventilation, so you want to do something with these. But I would say when you're housing your slug, you want to decide what you want first. So your options are pretty much a lot. You just want to have enough space um, for your slugs. Not enough space that it's going to be, you're going to lose them or it's going to be way too dry for them. You want something, if you have one slug, something like this would work awesome or something even smaller. Uh, there are rocks falling everywhere. Um, that's okay. I gotta get rid of those. Anyway, um, you can do Tupperware containers. I don't have any with me right now, even though they're like, 
like five feet away from me. I don't have any in my hands right now to show you guys, but uh, basically you can just go to the Dollar Tree. That is my go-to when I'm getting containers. I just get them. You can just drill some tiny holes with slugs. You may not even want to drill holes at all because they can get through the tiniest little holes ever. So if you're choosing a Tupperware container, don't probably don't want to drill holes. And yeah, you probably don't want to drill holes because they can get through anything. And then um, you can decide this. These you this one is from Walmart, but you can get one of these at Walmart or you can get one at PetSmart. And in PetSmart they have black lids. There's a difference. The one at Walmart have like all different colored lids. You can decide. And then Walmart these have black lids. And or oh my gosh, at PetSmart they have black lids and. You can decide the size you want so you can get one that's literally that big it's so cute or you can get one that's like mm, that big or so I, i'm gonna get one of those because i don't have any that are that big but you can get one that's same size as this you can get a big one small one whatever size you want so if you're gonna get a critter keeper get one of pet smart they're probably gonna be more pricey but it's worth it i think um they might be more durable i don't really know but i, I don't think so but they might be Anyway, once, so you can do the Critter Keeper um, containers. You can also do glass terrariums. I don't have any glass terrariums with slugs just because they're kind of messy and um, much more messier than snails, I think. But you can get glass terrariums. Um, you've seen mine, so you know what they look like. You can get some with opening doors if you want to be fancy. Those cost more money though. If you get a, um, here's what I do. I go buy multiple big glass aquariums at Petco. Not PetSmart, Petco. And they're very cheap, but they don't come with anything. They're just by themselves, no lid, no nothing. And then you go and buy the lid for that size terrarium. And it's super cheap. I have four, three or four or more, I don't know. I have a few of them, very helpful. Um, then buying like whole starter kits that have like aquarium stuff that you don't need um, So that is one thing you can do if you don't have that at your um, Petco you can try and find one that doesn't come with a lot of equipment or something But yeah, you can do glass aquariums uh, Anything now to ventilation um, Anything that's kind of like a um, grid like this um I would love to show you mine. I will get it in a minute, but you're gonna want to tape these up and I will show you how to do that in a minute. So here is one of mine. This is one to my one of my 10 gallon aquariums. I just grabbed it really quickly. And um, basically there is painter's tape all over this one. It doesn't look as nice because you've got that, but you can put tape right over that. I did it with my other ones, but this one I just didn't bother doing it. I like this method a lot because it doesn't look as um, weird as plastic wrap. With plastic wrap, you can just tape plastic wrap over this whole thing, put little pin holes in it. And I know you may be saying that's not even enough holes, but they don't really breathe a lot, so it's perfectly fine. And um, what I love about this is I, this is probably way too much ventilation. I need to cover this more up. But you can just take the tape and layer it over this and it looks really good. Keeps um, humidity in and you can just um, put a towel over this and it holds humidity perfect. Um, so yeah, if you get a, so this is like the screen lids that I get and you see how many holes there are, it's so much ventilation, you're gonna have to cover that up. You can also use a towel for ventilation like put it over but that's a bit it'll get messy over time so this is very good this will probably get messy too and you'll probably have to change out some of the tape but this works this is a very good method the plastic wrap i used to use that for these lids but i don't anymore because um it would blow off i'm gonna go put this away and then show you guys what to do with the critter keepers so the critter um the critter keepers um so what I, I told you I don't really use plastic wrap a lot because it blows away, yeah. So, and it's pretty messy, it gets dirty, you have to keep changing it almost every other week. So I don't really like to use that and the tape is so much easier. 
it's painter's tape, I believe, or it's it's like a papery material. Um, your snail, if you have a snail that likes to eat pretty much everything, they may eat it. Just depends. So, this one, you can do the same exact thing with this one. You just put tape over this. Um, you can even use like duct tape, just regular duct tape. You can use that. You can use any tape to be honest. Maybe not like scotch tape because that would come off very easily. Just use some kind of duct tape and that would work perfectly. Um, then I used to use, I have one of these still with plastic wrap, but I did used to do plastic wrap. Um, and basically what you do, I hope the beetles don't fly out of this. Nobody's flying out, that's good. Um, basically what you do is get a piece of plastic wrap big enough to cover the opening, put it over the opening, and then put your lid back on. That would hold humidity perfect. Just put a few pinholes and it's great, but it gets messy as well. That also works if you want to do that. Um, another thing to mention is these also have a little hole right here where this flap opens. I love this because you can easily access to put food in without having to take this off, but that's another plus to these things. But um, they, slugs can get out of that, so I put a little piece of tape over it or something. If you had the plastic wrap, you probably won't have to deal with that, but that is that. So, after you find how you want to house your slug, um, we're going to talk about what's put in there and how to manage temperature and humidity. So, I would say, so what, um, there are a couple different options to substrate. Um, they do need substrate, not always as much. Um, they do, I think they do like to have a bit of a thicker substrate and then more, less of a powdery one, like a coconut fiber. But your options are, so you can buy like a topsoil, um, but it can't have fertilizers in it. So you can buy a topsoil that doesn't have fertilizers. You can use dirt from outside, but the dirt from outdoors has to be sterilized in the oven. I can do a video on how to do that too. So the dirt from outside has to be sterilized. You can use coconut fiber. Um, you can find that very commonly in stores in the bricks. And what the good thing about the bricks is um, once you soak them, they're nice and wet. So you can just put it in there and nice and wet with the bags. It's dry, so it's kind of iffy. Um, then there is like reptosoil. I'm not 100% sure what is in that, but um, it's it's different than coconut fiber, but you can do reptosoil as well. So those are kind of your four options. There are other options, but I'm gonna say those are your four main options. For one slug, I would do about an inch of soil and as you can see i don't have much in here because this is for a beetle um but about like an maybe up to here or here of soil um they do like to burrow but you're gonna want to have it always moist for them to burrow this is very dry because it's for a beetle and it's coconut fiber and this one has like one beetle in it i need to fix this thing up for them but um yes so your substrate um, for decor um, because slugs don't have shells I would say you could put decor in there although some I guess they could take impact from them if they fell they could take impact but there's a very small chance of that happening so you can put decor in there um, like little things but not so yeah, you could have decor in there. I've never heard of anyone saying no, but they could take impact on them when they fall or something. So be aware of that, I guess. But that's very, very small chance of that happening. So um, I guess what you think is best for them. You can do branches, um, leaf litter. They love leaf litter. Make sure the branches and the leaf litter are all sterilized. And then plants. Um, I will put a link to safe snail plants in the description 
there's non-safe and safe. So I recommend doing live plants because it just gives it a very beautiful um, effect to your tank and they love it, like literally love it. Uh, sometimes they won't eat plants, sometimes they will eat the plants you give them, just depends. But yes, so there's plants, decor, substrate, now humidity and temperature. Now slugs definitely need it more humid than snails. Now, slugs don't like it watery, like they don't like water pouring down. They like it humid. They like it very humid and the stuff around them can be kind of wet, but very just damp, not very like flooded. If you understand what I'm saying, not like flooded, not like everything's covered in water like snails, they kind of like it just more damp. So what I recommend you do is get a fogger. Now this is very expensive, I'm not gonna lie, it's like $50 for this small little thing but it works very nicely and I'm gonna buy one. But you can get a fog machine and it's kind of got like a little tube and you just put it over like, if this was all taped up and you had a little hole right here that wasn't taped up, you just put it right there and fog goes in. It's perfect. I don't, yeah, it's, it's perfect, but I wouldn't use it for like maybe reptiles. I've heard some controversy on that using those foggers for reptiles but it's perfect for snails and slugs. So you can find that on Chewy. I will try and put the link in the description for that. I've seen that some people use those for snails and they're awesome. So maybe try, if you don't want to do the fogger, you can just mist it every, um, about twice a day maybe. And then you can do a humidity gauge. Um, I just said that wrong, it's fine. Yeah, you can um, get a little thermometer that will measure the humidity and the temperature. Um, temperature, I'd say between 70s, I don't know about into the 80s, maybe, depending on the species, but 60s, 70s, a very, I mean, I guess how, it depends on how cold your house is or how warm your house is, but a very um, warm-ish temperature. I would say if you have a small tank, don't get one of those, but maybe just upgrade it to one of those big carriers or um, if you're using a container upgrade it to a bigger one i don't know so you can have the gauge and i said it wrong <laughs> i said it wrong again um in there i would say i was gonna say that the temperature is more uh relevant like you need it more than the humidity but i would say with slugs you need the um yeah with slugs you need the humidity thing <laughs> more than you need the um the temperature one but maybe different with snails if you can get them both that would be great so after you have that all you're gonna want to be feeding your slugs now slugs relatively i don't know how much more protein things they're gonna need than snails but i know that most species don't need calcium you can give them calcium for like I don't know but you don't you don't have to give them calcium some species do need calcium others don't but if you want to give them calcium uh, I would just uh, consult somebody who owns a slug and ask them maybe I don't know um a lot of people actually do give their slugs calcium but I don't I mean oh. <laughs> so, Slugs have a relatively different diet than snails. I'm not sure how much more, how much different it is because I've never actually seen a, like a diet sheet, but a good percentage, um, but yeah, let's just get into this and I'll tell you. Um, so a good percentage of your snail's diet is going to be veggies. And then a smaller percent, about like 20, 14% is gonna be fruits so you want to have a lot of veggies and a little bit of fruit and then calcium like a snail needs about 20 percent or so of calcium if i'm correct um they don't need calcium because they don't really have shells but you can give them calcium for like nutrition and stuff some species do have internal um like plates inside of them that are act as shells so they do need calcium, but you're just gonna have to um, figure out what species you have and then consult um, beyond that. So just decide whether you wanna give yours calcium or not. 
um, it would never hurt. It's just not necessary. So yeah, it's not necessary, but it wouldn't hurt to give them it. So just not too much, I guess you could say. So with that out of the way of food, uh, protein. So they do need protein. Um, I would recommend giving them at least once a week if you can do that. You can do things like, um, you can do blood worms, meal worms. Um, you can do algae flakes, fish food, things like that. I will leave like a list maybe. I will try and leave a list. Um, they need, depending on the food, it's depending on that protein source that you're giving them on how often they're gonna need it. Um, there are is a list of like ones that you can feed them once a month or twice a month. There's ones that you can feed them once a week or twice a week. There's ones that you can do, um, I don't know if it's every day or not, but there are different, depending on the source, the protein source you're giving them, um, it depends on how often you're going to have to give it to them. So protein is the thing you're going to need. A number, a really easy one if you have fish is fish food. You can give them fish food about once a week. Um, if that's what you want to do, that's very easy. And then, um, peas, I think you got to do peas every day, but I'm not 100% sure on that, or twice a week. I don't know, though. So, I would try and send you a list of that, too, but there's your nutrition, your, um, setup, and everything else. So, yes, handling, don't handle them as much as you would with um, snails because they are relatively a lot more slimier than snails and they are more vulnerable. But if you do handle your slugs, I recommend only doing it for a few minutes or with gloves. And they do actually, um, I've heard some people say that slugs tend to be, um, a lot more friendly and like to be held more often, even though they really can be held more often. But yeah. So there is everything you need to know about having a pet slug. I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoy your slug. Or if you're getting a slug, let me know if you want one of mine once they're old enough. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like this video and have a great rest of your day. Bye.